question. In court, what is news, however, is the fact that one of the grounds on which Peter Obi and the Labour Party is contesting the results or the declaration of Tinobu as president-elect by INEC in the middle of the night, like a thief, is Tinobu's drug case in the US. Now, six months ago, Festus Kayamu went on channels television, live TV, and told 21 lies, blatant lies, to defend Tinobu then. And he got away with it because he was not called to order, either by the NBA or by our judicial system. He got away with it. Now, this matter is now court case. Is Festus Kayamo ready to repeat these 21 lies to defend Tinubu in court? Because right now, what he did on channels television on Politics Today, when he was trying to talk down on Shehun or Kimbaloe, what he did was tell blatant lies. And it was not under oath, so he could get away with it. But when this case gets to court and the hearing starts, the tribunal is a court. If anybody lies in a tribunal, is lying under oath, and the person is committing a crime called perjury, for which the person could go to jail. Now the question is, these 21 lies that Festus Kayamo told to defend Tinubu about four months ago, will he repeat them at the tribunal, knowing fully well that he will be perjuring himself, knowing fully well that he will be lying under oath? Will he have the mind to repeat these 21 lies? By the way, if you have not seen the 21 lies that Festus Kayamo told on live TV to defend Tinubu on this US drug case, I'll play it for you now. Watch it here and then you can decide for yourself if Festus Kiyamu will actually be ready to lie under oath, to perjure himself, to go to jail to defend Tinubu. I wonder why this even is because this is this is the same Festus Kiyamu that was hunting and attacking Tinubu in the during Tinubu's first term in office and even second term. This was the same Festus Kiyamu. What happened? That he switched to the opposite side and is now willing to tell lies to defend Tinobu. Now, telling the lies is on TV is one thing, but telling lies under oath in court in a tribunal means perjury and it means going to jail. Will Festus Kayamo be ready? And indeed, other lawyers in the APC team, will they be ready to tell lies to defend Tinobu and risk going to jail? Watch the 21 lies and then decide for yourself. Those accounts were 10 accounts in three banks. Accounts legitimately opened by him. And there were funds that he kept saving, where he was keeping his savings in the U.S. That's a lie. Because his salary was $2,400. And at one point, he deposited $661,000. At another time, he deposited $1.2 million. That's $1.8 million. How do you save $1.8 million when your salary on a monthly basis is $2,400, which is actually just $38,000 plus per year? And he stated it himself that he didn't have any other source of income. So where is the savings? As I speak with you, if you want to know whether there is a criminal charge against somebody, you must have a complainant. So you will see the state versus so so and so person you must see that and then you must have a charge number you must have a charge number if there's a charge against anybody there is no charge number in those documents there were two charges that's another lie 18 usc 1956 and 18 usc 1957 which borders on money laundry and financial fraud and then there was a charge number the charge number is staring you in the face 93c4488 that's another lie from Festus Kayamo. If you look at those documents too, Asiwa Jubala Tinubu was not mentioned as a defendant. People have skipped, people have made, they've skipped that. It was only account numbers that were mentioned, and at the end of the day, they just said account numbers in the name of Tinubu. That is all. Not that Tinubu was a defendant. It was accounts in his name. Not, not him. Those accounts were sued, not him. It was action in rem. 
That's another lie. The prayers of the United States attorney was that due notice be given to all interested parties to appear and show cause why forfeiture should not be decreed. Who will come and appear? Is it the account number? So that's another lie. There is no charge. There was no charge. There was no indictment. There was no criminal process. It was a civil, purely civil process against those accounts. There indeed were two charges, 18 U.S.C. 1956 and 18 U.S.C. 1957, which bordered on money laundry and engaging in money transactions in property derived from fraud. Now, there was an affidavit by somebody called Kevin Moss. Kevin Moss is just a normal prosecutor you see. That's another lie. Kevin Moss is not just another prosecutor you see. Kevin Moss is a senior special agent. And aside that, the work he did will boggle your mind. These four sections from the document outline that he filed 18,300 files. So that's no joke. What they did in the case of Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tudubu was therefore to file what they call an interim process for for feature it was not a final process that's another lie there were five documents and the last of them is the final for feature the final decree you can see it there so there was a final decree starting from the verified proof of for feature to the warrant of seizure down to the settlement down to the final for feature so that's another lie the kevin moss all those the, the positions you see there about narcotics and all that it was not a judgment of the court it was an opinion of a prosecutor trying to convince the court to issue a forfeiture order it was not an opinion of a court another lie these are seizure warrants that were issued to first of all freeze the account and then there was a final forfeiture that was issued which is also an order of court so to say it is speculative and it is not final that's another lie and so it was a presumption these processes are processes made of mere presumption so they found monies in his accounts they said well they needed to come forward and in that affidavit of kevin moss again another lie this is verified complaint of forfeiture they were not speculation he backed it up with an affidavit and he got a warrant of seizure and then got settlement and got final forfeiture so it is not mere speculation this is another lie from Festus Keyamu. They said they interviewed Mobil. Mobil said, yes, this man is a treasurer in the Mobil. But they said, no, those funds are not from them. But they, they, they confirmed his status, not as a criminal, but as a respectable employee of Mobil. It is in the affidavit of Kevin Moss. This is a potential lie. Because the Mobil is talking about is Mobil Oil Nigeria Limited, which is not Exxon Mobil. Because many people seem to think that it is Exxon Mobil. It is not Exxon Mobil. In fact, the company has changed its name now from Mobil Oil Nigeria Limited to 11 PLC. Look at, look at paragraph 38 of the affidavit by Kevin Moss. I want everybody to look at paragraph 38. After the rigmarole of trying to find out whether the artists, the, the account in money, where the monies came from, whether they were you know, linked to drug and all of that, it was all speculative. They came to the conclusion that the proceeds he got from his the the tax uh the the deposit he made there he made there what they call uh, what this bank has normally called investments he kept the money there and he was getting profit on the interest they said he did not pay he had not paid tax on those interests that is all so it was not like a deliberate so, act so that's another lie from festus keyamu the whole charges that were brought against bola ahmed tinubu where USE code 1956 and 1957 and they bonded on money laundry. To say that it was tax is a deliberate lie, a very, very big lie. In fact, the forfeiture order did not include that it was for tax. This is the forfeiture order, the final order. It stated that it is for narcotics trafficking and money laundering. Those were the two charges. So this is another lie from Festus Kayamu. Yes. Would you liken the settlement that Bola Tinubu had with the, with the court in the United States at the time over these monies as a sort of a plea bargain? No. A plea bargain, you cannot build something on nothing and expect it to stand. A plea bargain must arise out of a criminal charge. Like I said, there is no charge, no com nothing anywhere, nothing, nothing like a charge anywhere. That's another lie from Festus Keyamo for Bola Ahmed Tinubu. There were two charges, USC code 1956 and 1957, which bordered on money laundry and using proceeds illegally gotten. Going from that, you see now that there was a plea bargain. This is stipulation of compromise settlement, which is plea bargain. 
So there was a plea bargain. And in the plea bargain, initially, it was supposed to be 1.8 million that was seized. But eventually, they just fined him based on the charges that he was charged because he was charged with two codes violation, USC code 1956 and USC code 1957. And if you look at the punishment for those violations, it says not more than 500,000 US dollars. That was why only 460,000 US dollars was deducted from the account because that's what the law spe speculates as fine punishment for the violation of the law. The other option would have been imprisonment, which I'm sure that Tunubu would not have wanted. So there was a charge, there was a plea bargain, and there was a fine, which is actually the forfeiture of the 460,000 US dollar based on the law. You yes. established that there was a forfeiture, but if there was a, a forfeiture yes. uh, that was made, and uh, that kind of forfeiture is still subsisting, and it has a criminal nature that has not been set aside up to date. No, 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 no. A forfeiture, and you see, that's why I said you should take a paper and a biro. It's a, this is a lecture class for you. A forfeiture is not something hanging on your neck. It's a permanent settlement and everybody will shake your hands and go your way. The forfeiture in this case, which proves that this is another lie from Professor Skayamo for Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the forfeiture in this case is based on code violations for 1956 and 1957. The punishment for it is either fine of not more than 500,000 US dollars or imprisonment. And so Bola Ahmed Tinubu was given a fine which is the forfeiture settlement that we, he got and it was four hundred and sixty thousand dollars there was a forfeiture which is actually a fine based on the two charges that were brought against him i refer you again paragraph six page two of the settlement signed in that paragraph six they were even begging ashiwaju they said that look please don't proceed against us again this is a final settlement between us go your way we go our way that's another lie from him from festus kayamo festus kayamo as a senior advocate of nigeria knows that there is always indemnity clause in such plea bargains to prevent you from saying or your children from saying oh the money that was seized from you was actually responsible for the death of your relative and so they want to sue because of that it's just an indemnity clause that is usual in fact not only for plea bargains that it's normal so coming to say that they were begging him, that was just a blatant lie. Out of the nine, out of the ten accounts, it was only one account, the one in Heritage Bank, that they took four sixty thousand dollars as their tax on his on his uh, interest on the, the as, as interest as tax on interest that he benefited from the deposits he made, that the investments he made in those accounts. Four hundred and sixty thousand dollars was forfeited. And it was forfeited with respect to violations of USC code 1956 and USC code 1957. It's clearly stated here in black and white. It has nothing to do with tax. And if you go into details of what the punishment is for code 1956 and 1957, you will see that it is a fine of not more than 500000 or prison time. And so $460,000 is less than $500,000. That was the fine. That was the forfeiture punishment for Bola Tinubu for the violation of these two codes. So it's a punishment. The, the forfeiture was a fine that he actually paid. It's not tax. There was no way that it was stated that the 460,000 US dollars was for tax. And Kayamo knows this. So he blatantly lied to deceive Nigerian public just to protect and defend Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The NBA should sanction him for this action. This cannot be negligence. This is just blatant lie. These documents, in fact, rather than indict Ashiwaju, these documents exculpate him and makes him as white as snow. This document actually nails Bola Ahmed Tinubu to the cross. It puts, it's a final nail on the coffin. It's clear, look at it, it's a final order, it's a forfeiture. It said 460,000 US dollars belonging to Bola Ahmed Tinubu represents proceeds of narcotics trafficking or were involved in financial transactions in violation of USC code 1956 and 1957. And the punishment of it is for feature. And the for feature is determined based on the fines or imprisonment that is the punishment stipulated for that law, for that charge. So this is another lie, another lie from Festus Kiyamu for, for Bola Tinubu. There's a fundamental question on the source of the money it deposited of which he reached a settlement. 
um, has he given a satisfactory explanation of the source of the funds? Well, thank you so much. Now, at that point, the burden was on the prosecution in the U.S. or from the states in the U.S. to, to, to prove that the funds were proceeds of narcotics. Now, that if you, if you look at paragraph, I want you to go to paragraph two of the affidavit of Kevin Moss. He kept saying that it was his reasonable suspicion. It was, it, it was like um, a probable cause, probable belief. It, it, kept, it was speculative. All it was speculative. They, they, they had not come to a definite conclusion. That's another lie for Tinubu by Kayamu. They came to a definite conclusion, and that's why there was a forfeiture decree, a final one. And the charge there, you see it there, it is in violation of USC code 1956 and 1957. You go to a, a new land, you go to a new place abroad, any Nigerian you see, especially from your own tribe, they become like brothers to you. You associate with them, you visit them. You may do one or two transactions. You may not exactly know what they are involved in. You may not know what they are involved in. It happens to all of us. And you can see that the whole of that investigation actually touched on two or three Nigerians. So let me admit that. That had nothing to do with Ashiwaju. And I don't want to mention their names here. People should go and read it, but because they have families in Nigeria. The other Nigerians, two or two of them, who were actually linked to narcotics. One of them was actually arrested. That one made confessional statements and confessed another Nigerian as the one involved. But that principal suspect, read that affidavit, never mentioned the name of Ashiwaju. What happened? Ashiwaju went to open an account. The address by which he opened the account was an address already, you know, used by these people. I think some block of flats. Maybe he was happened to be in that block of flats too. So they now linked it to say, so, oh, well, these other people they were investigating for narcotics, they are in the same, the same address used by Shiwaju to open that account. So that is what is there. I cannot, I cannot deviate from it. That's another lie because Bolatinumbu himself said he knew these people and he opened the account. The company he had access to had these people as shareholders. So that's another lie. Look at these documents. Section 137 of the Constitution 1D, subsection uh, 1D, uh, which uh, says that a person under a sentence of imprisonment or fine for any offense involving dishonesty or fraud by whatever name it's called or for any other offenses imposed on him by any court or tribunal shall not be qualified to contest for the office of the president of nigeria in view of um, the forfeiture and the sent sentiment that bola tunubu had in the united states as a senior advocate of nigeria what are the legal implications of that circumstance considering the section 137 subsection 1d of the constitution well, <laughs> forfeiture is not a fine. Fine is a punishment. Fine is a consequence of a conviction. Fine is a consequence of a criminal trial. So fine has nothing to do with forfeiture. Forfeiture is a civil process. It's a complete civil process. So say, well, we are not even going into trial at all. The state goes into forfeiture proceedings with individuals just for the purpose of getting their monies. Two charges were brought, USC Code 1956, USC Code 1957, and the punishment for those two violations is either a fine or imprisonment. And the fine specified for the USC Code 1956 is fine of not more than 500,000 US dollars. So that's why he was fined $460,000, which he forfeited. This disqualifies Bola Metinobu totally because if you look at the fine that he paid, it's a fine. He paid the fine. He paid it. It's not disputing it. Though they call it for feature, the for feature here is a fine, which is the punishment for the violation of USC code 1956 and 1957. So having been fined, it disqualifies Tinobu from running for the post of president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And of course, drug trafficking, uh, money laundering is an offense. It's an offense. Engaging in monetary transaction in property derived from specified unlawful activity is an offense. So Bolatinubu must be disqualified. You have, at that point, he had not fulfilled his, his financial obligations regarding the deposits that were made there and the interest on those deposits. And so they said, well, you know what? Out of these 10 accounts, we are going to take our interest. That's a blatant lie. Where do you see interest in the order here? This is the final order of forfeiture. It says that funds in social account in to the amount of 460,000 US dollars 
in that account in Heritage Bank belonging to Tinubu represent proceeds of narcotics? Where did they say tax? And were involved in financial transactions in violation of USC 1956 and 1957, for which the punishment is a fine of not more than 500,000 US dollars or prison time. So which of these have to do with tax? That's another lie, another blatant lie from Festus Kayamu in defending Tinubu. Fourth feature is that, look, this thing we think is our tax. Look up paragraph 38 now. They say it's tax. What belongs to them? They are just taking out so, so you can go. They just take took what belongs to them. So, and I'll... Paragraph 38 has nothing to do with the order of forfeiture. The order of forfeiture was for narcotics trafficking and money laundering. USC code 1956 and 1957. So that's another lie from Kayamu saying that it was for tax. It was not for tax. Paragraph 38 has nothing to do with the final forfeiture order. This is the final forfeiture order we're looking at here. The same document that Festus Kayamu has, which he said he has read over 10 years ago, and he's a son. I have read this for less than a week, and I can see and understand this in clear, simple English. This proves that Bola Tinobu stands disqualified. He stands disqualified. We must take this to court, and we will. Tafa Balogun, at his level of the IGO police, now wrote an official letter to the United States to the embassy in Lagos to say, can you give us a response, the Nigerian government, a response as to whether Ashiwaju was involved in any of such, you know, uh, uh, measures. There was, therefore, you know, sometime investigation. They contacted the FBI in the United States. And then the FBI, you know, supplied the information to the embassy in Lagos. And then the Michael Bonnet wrote back to the Inspector General of Police of Abalogo and said, look, we have official confirmation from the United States that there was no criminal indictment, no conviction, no criminal charge against Ashiwaju Bola Tinobu. Now, that's another lie. Because this is the letter that you are looking at in front of you. What it says is that they have checked their FBI database and there is no arrest record, no criminal arrest record, no warrant, no warrant for Tinobu's arrest. That was what he said. He did not clear Tinubu of any criminal wrongdoing. He just said that there was no criminal arrest. And of course, nobody's saying that there was a criminal arrest because there was a plea bargain. He was even here in Nigeria when all these activities were going on. So he couldn't have been arrested from Nigeria. He was fined based on the laws that he violated, the USC Code 1956 and 1957. So using this letter to say it was cleared, that is a lie. It is no longer news that... Peter Obi of the Labour Party is contesting the outcome of the 2023 presidential election in court. What is news, however, is the fact that one of the grounds on which Peter Obi and the Labour Party is contesting the results or the declaration of Tinubu as president-elect by INEC in the middle of the night, like a thief, is Tinubu's drug case in the U.S., now, six months ago, Festus Kayamu went on channels television, live TV, and told 21 lies, blatant lies, to defend Tinubu then. And he got away with it because he was not called to order, either by the NBA or by our judicial system. He got away with it. Now, this matter is now court case. Is Festus Kayamu